You ever see a travel trailer with fifth wheel landing gear? Well, you have now. Meet the new 2023 Eagle Series by Jayco. This is the 320 FBOK. It's a floor plan actually recorded not too long ago in the 22 model. You won't see any major changes, but that what they've done with the landing gear on this is completely unlike anything I've ever seen. So uh, first of all, Eagle HT is really almost a trailer. It's kind of in a class of its own, like it's seven foot tall. Um, and, and truly, especially with the new landing gear, the definition I think of like a flat deck fifth wheel. And this floor plan specifically is very interesting because it's a double slide, it's one living room super slide, and then it's a bedroom uh, like party suite basically with like a lounge, sofa, book, nook, reading space in the front. Um, and it's, it's a very unconventional floor plan, but not everybody camps the same. And sometimes you need something a little different. Um, I think that this is beyond the realm of where I feel a half ton should ever be considering handling something like this. I think you're a minimum good three quarter ton and up. But if what you're looking for is like, if you want that snowbird sunbird camping situation, you want to be able to go someplace and spend an extended time, but really be comfortable when you're there. This is perfect. But at the same time, especially with that landing gear being rock solid on your campsite and no slides on the door side this would be extremely like park and seasonal friendly so it's one model that could really do a couple different things now if you are towing and going you've got fifth wheel suspension on this thing a more ride shock dampening suspension wet bolt fasteners the four star eagle ride and handling package tire pressure monitoring now standard on these things and um this is the first eagle floor plan i've seen with a front windshield very exciting to see what that might mean for future development from the eagle family you can get her king or queen bed uh one or two air conditioners uh, the, the standard air is a 15,000 BTU whisper ducted, by the way, to help keep things cool but quiet, which is the opposite of me. I'm neither cool nor quiet, especially if you ask my wife and kid. <laughs> There's a lot more to learn about this one. It's got a couple hitches in its giddy up. I'm going to show you the good with the bad and everything I can as we go through here in a live dealer display today. So don't be surprised if we have a little surprise guest that pops in. Most people tend to avoid the guy with the camera, though. Most of us seem to be camera shy. I think maybe the FBI might be after a couple of us. Now, no matter how you slice it, HTs, they're built different. I don't know how else to say it. They look, they feel different. They don't read the same as anything else. And there's a few reasons for it. First of all, they're doing my nerd preferred way of uh, the slide flooring where it's not only carpetless, but the slide flooring matches the main deck floor. You don't see a seam and it's floor flush. There's no big toe stubber right there. We've got an easy viewing direct facing entertainment center and the TV's not mounted up pie high to the sky, which is really critical in an Eagle HT considering the fact that these have a very rare quality, seven foot ceilings. Um, now, unfortunately that TV is not reflecting me like a funhouse mirror. Unfortunately, I just really have you know, I lost weight and then I found it. <laughs> I'm doing the yo-yo weight loss routine and unfortunately I'm back on the upswing right now. But uh, like I was saying, with this having the floor flush uh, carpetless slide system, the seven foot ceiling with tons of lights, which by the way, that ceiling is six and a half inches bigger than industry standard and still three inches bigger than many quote taller ceiling campers. It just opens everything up in here. Also, by virtue of the fact that you don't directly see the air conditioner, and if you don't see the square, you won't hear the air with Jayco's whisper ducted air system. Uh, that's nerdism number 37 if you're, if you're keeping nerdism score. Um, it, it keeps the RV cool without nearly as much noise. Now, depending on who you talk to, some people say it's like 50% quieter, some people say 70. Um, any actual owners of Eagle products who have used this and then camped in something else, let me know how it feels. But this I love. So. They've, they've used two separate storage spaces to clearly define the break point between the kitchen living area and the front, like, full bedroom suite up here. You know, bed slide travel trailer. Um, but because it's so big and wide open, it has so many windows and so much glass coverage, it makes even the living room feel big. So even though the living room, to me, only has... It, well, not to me. Because the living room only has one slide, to me, it feels like a multi-slide living space. Now, these are uh, uh, 50 amp. I personally feel like I would like to see a second air conditioner, even in Michigan, if I was going to buy this thing. Just there's something about the fact that when you start seeing a bedroom slide, air conditioner starts to feel like it should go along that. Now, you know what? 
Uh, I will admit, like, um, when uh, this channel was Halo RV, I used to be the guy that built and specced out our inventory, and I became very slanted toward the benefit of king beds. But I'm really, I've been enjoying the look of queen beds that I've been seeing in a lot of RVs. And, and I think maybe it helps that Jayco finishes theirs very nicely. You see, you've got windows everywhere. All of these windows, by the way, have dropped down blackout shades. You're going to get to see those a couple times. But when you get the 60 by 80 standard default true queen in this, you get those nice side stands. Now, if you go with the 70 by 80 king, you get rid of those. And if it has a king bed, you can always size down to a queen, but you, you wouldn't have the side stands there. Anyway, looking under the bed, the storage in this one's bedroom is a little different. Because it goes with that front lounge, it has like a storage trunk, a storage chest. It doesn't necessarily have the uh, like full front closet. And that's one of those things I've personally got very mixed emotions on. Um, I, I've never felt that more storage is ever the wrong answer. Uh, I do think that aesthetically, visually, this thing is just stunning. I love walking through it, especially the way that Jayco has like all the little pictures and all the little knickknacks and doodads out here for, for viewing. It looks awesome to me. But um, is the is the windshield and the bench, is that a mistake? Would you rather see this with a closet? And I don't think they offer this with a closet swaption, by the way. I know they do that in one pinnacle model. Do you think that's something they would offer? Let me ask you. If it had a closet, would you buy it? Whereas right now, without the closet, you would not. Is that a deal breaker factor? That's truly the question. You know, when, when a manufacturer says, what do people want? What they're actually asking is, what are they willing to buy and what won't they buy? So, if it had a closet, if it didn't have a closet, is that a yes, no deal breaker? Please let me know. Um... Tell you what, let's go pop a squat over here on the sofa. I talked about the entertainment center, and then I never really dove into it a little bit. So, like I said, when you're just sitting down at a natural, organic head height, bang, TV is straight across from you. But what if you're sitting over at the dinette? Well, good news, that thing pivots around, so you can, uh, you know, you can watch TV from anywhere. Now we're looking at this today with the 12 volt compressor fridge. There is an eight cubic foot gas electric two way option. Um, all of the drawers, all plywood boxed. The uh, cabinetry is all pocket screw. But look at the size of that fifth wheel size microwave. That's the thing, though. Eagle HT is a flat deck fifth wheel. Now, that being said, it still has the size and a lot of the weight and a lot of the cost of a fifth wheel. But you don't have to get a fifth wheel hitch. You don't have to give up the bed of your truck. You know, maybe you've got a cap on your truck or something like that. That's where this comes in. And this isn't, again, this is definitely not for everybody, but it fits into some negative spaces that a lot of the RV industry just doesn't do very well. Now, you saw the blackout roller shades. Um, we looked at the trifold hide to bed right there. This is absolutely available theater seating. So let me ask you again, hide a bed or theater? Which way should Bish's RV be stocking this? And again, let me know maybe if, like, what region you're from. I'm kind of curious to know if there's some regional insight into that. Now, we're going to get over here onto the left in just a second. First of all, a little more standard bathroom stuff. Up top, this is a Max Air vent fan. It's a little bit different variety. It's like a, I don't know, five, six inch fan or something like that. It might be four. Anyway, but what you can do, you don't have to get a, a rain blocker cover on it. Basically, that's all built in. You could open and close it right from here. Uh, again, blackout roller shade for that window right there. And the, uh, the toilet space, especially the leg room, very, very nice. Very, very nice for somebody of my size and stature. A little bit over six foot, by the way. Now, over here, when I first saw that navel blue in the bathroom, buddy, it rocked me. I was like, whoa, I am but a simple Midwestern boy and change is scary. But it's really grown on me. And I like the fact that the, the bathroom doesn't necessarily have to match everything else. But the headroom in these with a seven foot ceiling, hallelujah. I can't tell you how tired I get of smacking my head against the ceiling of this stuff to make a video for you. Hey, look at me hit my head. <laughs> but, you know, I like folks to get an idea of the sizing uh, of this thing. So over here, if you look at this, um, vampire powers activate so you don't see my reflection. There's just a big like almost floor to ceiling mirror so you can see what you look like before the neighbors do you know but if you notice they're shelving tons of storage but then a hanging rod up here well you could convert that into a closet space or if you look down below inside here that could also be 
uh, washer dryer space. Now, by default, it's kind of set up for a combo. I do think you could put a stackable in there. However, uh, anytime, every single time I record this floor plan, I'm going to absolutely stop the show, get on my floor uh, soapbox, and make you aware of something that is very important, I think. So if you watch a lot of my videos, you know, if something's great, I'll tell you. If it's not, I'll also tell you that because you work really hard for your money and you deserve to know. Like, could you install um, like an RV washer dryer type thing back there? Yes, absolutely. It's obviously prepped to do that. Should you? If you're towing, I think the answer is no. Because washer dryer manufacturers for RVs actually won't even honor their warranty if it's installed dead on the rear wall of an RV like that. Because the violence of bouncing will often break the drums in them. And it's not their fault. They built it not for that purpose exactly. Um, the uh, If you're going to be stationary, yeah, that would be absolutely awesome. So that might be one of those major, major points of consideration and concern for you. I don't want you spending fifth wheel level money only to find out, wait a minute, I can't do the one thing with it I absolutely had to and wanted to do? You freaking snakes lie to me. Like, I don't want to be that guy. If I see you at Walmart and you're buying lettuce, I don't want to hide down the dog food. I want to walk up, I want to shake your hand and look you in the eye. And even if you have a problem with your RV, I want you to know that we're there. We're there to take care of you. Now, that being said, I ask people all the time, if you could change one thing in this RV, what would it be? And I'm about to show you mine. It... There's one thing in this RV I'm just going to flat out say is stupid, and this time I'm actually not referring to myself. It's this over here. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought the shower door was closed, and I was going to lean against the shower door. I seriously just about went, oh man, that... <laughs> anyway, all right. So, this. This is to me... I, I'm just going to say it. I'm I'm going to I'm going to be very polarized. I'm just going to this is stupid. This should have been done better and I feel it could very easily for $0 be done better. So, they had an extra pocket of space, but they made it so that a metal door handle tink opens right into that. Stupid, right? Now, this is awesome storage space and capacity. How the flippity flip are you supposed to get there? That is even deeper than an elephant enema pocket. I like that they didn't waste the space. I, I seriously, I just about fell into the stupid shower kit. God bless America. Anyway, they didn't waste the space, but it just goes right behind the TV. Why? Why? When you tilt the TV out of the way, isn't it just open storage access in there? Okay, so I'm going to get off this now because obviously I feel very strongly about that. What is your two cents on that? To me, it would cost zero dollars just to do it better. Now, all that being said, and me going over this thing and having a brain aneurysm about it, is it a deal breaker for me? No, I could come up with some kind of tote system. I could slide some storage to me. It just, is it me? It feels like, it'd be, uh, see, I'm still stuck on it. Anyway, let's close the slides. Let's check out the road mode. Okay, still talking about that weird storage space now, but, I was here in the dealer display, and I found Mr. Rudy Bulls here at Jayco, and Rudy is the Eagle brand manager, and I was like, Rudy, I'm not gonna mince words. Not only is it stupid, but it's also dumb. Um, <laughs> with respect, no, absolutely. A, absolutely with respect. <laughs> but, Rudy, what did you just tell me? So, uh, what we're thinking about doing here, because it kind of had the same idea, uh, I'm about six foot three, and I still can't put my arm all the way through to access the backside of the storage. So what we thought about doing was uh, making this uh, the closet, uh, the pull-out pantry that we've done on about four or five different floor plans. Do we have one of those here they could take a look at? We could show them real quick. I have the 24E here. Let's go yeah. look at that. Yeah. So we were just talking, we're in a different floor plan right now. This is a 24RE, and this is the closet I was talking about. So... Now, it would be shaped a little different because it obviously wouldn't be in a corner, but like everything that you're seeing here, imagine that in that Eagle trailer that we just came from. Right, floor to ceiling, a lot of extra storage, a lot more accessible, a lot more pantry storage. That's kind of the idea we have in mind. So uh, feel free, drop us a comment, drop Josh comments. Uh, if you want to see anything, you like an Eagle, you don't like an Eagle, let us know, we're all ears. So just to kind of really complete the whole understanding of visual, we're gonna start right outside. Slides are closed, let's walk in here. What can we do, what can't we do? Over here, we've got our, uh, you know, big bedroom. Now it's very, with those double doors, easily accessible. People wanna ask, and, and I did this to myself. I made a video saying, can you use an RV with the slides closed? Here's the, the real thing though. 
Nobody can tell you if you can or if you can't because no RV slide builder and no RV manufacturer test using slides when they're closed. Now, a motorhome is different than a towable RV. Those are typically designed to be used that way. But no one tests for that in towables because they don't really think about you using it when it's closed up. That's not the intention. So it's always 1,000% of the time a case of do so at your own risk and use common sense. And if it breaks, unfortunately, it's going to be on you. Now, when this is closed up, I, and I hope you appreciate the fact that even in a case like this where it basically pinches the RV off and you can't get to much of it, when this is closed up, you are largely cut off of the RV. But one of the cool things over here is that's a rack and pinion slide. And the reason that matters is the fact that rack and pinion slides and cable slides both can be partially open without screwing up the sink in the motors. Meaning, now you don't, again, you still don't want to necessarily occupy it when it's partially deployed like this. That might knock something out of alignment. But if you just need to get back here, you need to use the bathroom, you hold the button for like three seconds or whatever, that's all it takes to, to gain some very quick travel accessibility. And frankly, I don't think you've even punched out of a parking space to do this. So I think it could be travel stop serviceable. You got to push a button. I also don't think it's that big a deal, but that's my two cents. What do you guys think? Now, I need a little bit of your input, first and foremost, when we step out here. When I first walked up to this, I just stopped. I'm like, something's different, something, like my brain couldn't process. It took me a second to digest the different stabilization system that they have on this. Now, the thing is, previously, the, uh, the, the leveling gear that they had on the Eagle series, it hung down so low. It's like a lot of people were saying, even if you watch my video comments, they're like, man, Eagles really like, they only have like a few inches of clearance. It feels like I'm gonna rip the jacks off this thing. Well, it's kind of funny because by going with a fifth wheel leveling system up here, what they've done is they've made it look almost weirdly empty in the front. And it will, when those legs retract, I mean, the most clearance you've ever seen in the front of an RV. But here's the funky thing, because it is truly fifth wheel landing gear, it has zero need for a tongue jack. But this is where I need your input. This is the default chassis build from the chassis manufacturer, and they don't like to do a lot of custom work. But when I look at this and I just see open screws in a hole, it looks like something's missing. Even though there's nothing wrong with this RV, to me, I look at it, and if I was a customer, I would say, did you guys take the tongue jack off this one? Do I get the tongue jack when you buy it? What is the deal here? And if a dealer says, no, 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 it's built that way, man, it sounds super sus. You know, it sounds like, yeah, sure, Jack, get away from me. Basically, I, th I don't think they need to do much. I think they should just plug it, like a rubber plug, so that it looks intentional. Do you think that would be sufficient, or what would you rather see in the front of this? Now, part of the reason they did this, allegedly, according to them, is that if somebody feels this is weird, they could still throw a tongue jack on the front. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but that's the logic that they provided me. HT has maintained that front cargo tray up here. Um, it is sized if you want to put a generator up there or a cargo box or just a whole crap load of batteries, you could do that. And it's kind of funny, this floor plan especially, being their, really their first and to my knowledge, currently the only front windshield eagle that even exists out there, the front of it looks like almost weirdly blank, but oh, it looks good. With that orange lightsaber lighting on either side of that thing. Baby, that looks good to me right there. Not to mention awesome views. And that windshield, I think, because it's such a big wide open door to the bedroom, helps the whole thing look and feel nice and big. Now, what they've done in here um, is you do have a good full pass through, but you notice how they actually have like little drop down buckets on either side. If you got some bigger, oddly shaped cargo, maybe some small tools or something like that. Still magnet holdback, still slam latches. You know, they haven't decontented anything, which is weirdly something they did on a couple of the 22 Eagle HT models. It almost felt like in some respects, a couple of them went backwards slightly and that hasn't happened here. They, they've just kind of uh, enhanced it a little bit. Like it is prep now if you want a, uh, a campsite observation camera or um if you don't mind 
unhooking the rear view camera if you add one to the rv then pop one over here you could do that or you could get separate cameras or whatever issue or you can do no cameras i don't know nice big wide door i believe that's a 30 inch door on those um uh, friction hinged and this is one of those zero gravity david blaine magic stable steps that will just sort of hold itself there and thankfully with the extra handle that they give me here it makes it simple and easy oh god don't slam don't slam okay sorry i didn't want to like <laughs> and it, you know what Oh, I ended up slamming it on the floor anyway. Yeah, hi, that was that was me. Sorry, I, I break stuff. Ah, oh, that's embarrassing. You know, that's like, what do you think you're, you're like, oh look, there's Susie in the grocery store and you wave and it's not Susie. Oh, that is so embarrassing. <laughs> Goodyear Endurance Radials. Factory standard TPMS integrated into the uh, BM Pro command system. And again, Fifth wheel running gear, fifth wheel suspension shackles, wet bolt fasteners, the same hardware effectively they have on like a 15,000 pound Jayco North Point fifth wheel you've got here in this travel trailer. But empty, this thing weighs over 9,000 pounds. This ain't no ultralight, no sir. Um, and, and that's where I was saying, I think you're a minimum three quarter ton pickup for something like this. Massive power awning on this. What's funny though, you look at it, you're like, well, there's extra wall space. And um, yeah, but it's because it's, it's a huge awning. It's just an even huger trailer. But this camp kitchen, I think is very cool. This is something that hides behind the entertainment center. Um, when you get the camp kitchen, you get the griddle with it. They just don't have it out on display because that apparently takes too much time for them to set up. You notice I tend to at least pull out the box when I do my videos typically, but uh, I didn't set the RV up. Um, <laughs> I don't wanna mess with someone else's stuff either. Anyway, a uh, little outside, uh, you know, either, you know, storage, entertainment. Um, and, and like, this is down low where it's easy to get to. This isn't up so high that you feel like you're splashing water in your face every time you use it. Just smart, smart stuff. This of course has the uh, J Smart uh, safety uh, turn signal safety lighting package. So like if you flip on your right hand turn signal, all the lights down the right side of the RV will blink along with that tail light turn signal to give people an idea of what you're doing. Um, and you know, a ladder up to a roof, which Last couple of years, a lot of brands had peeled out and I'm seeing manufacturers realize that was a mistake and they're bringing it back. But while we're looking around the roof here, I wanna mention a couple things. Jayco is nearly, not completely, but nearly exclusive in their use of plywood roof decking, which gives them a heavier like roof and snow load walk-on rating. One of the other cool things on this is you see the Eagle HT's standard are roof solar prepped. But when we go to uh, Big Bird Eagle, I believe the uh, like roughly 200 watt Overlander solar package has become, I think, standard. I'm still getting up to snuff on some of my 23 update notes. Um, the thing is on HT though, you could, you could do that. You could do some of the Overlander solar packages. And personally, I, I, I would want, I would want some level of solar on there. So, uh, you know, they have like a 200 to 400 package. I think they have some other things that are available. What sort of default size do you, would you like to see on these? Tell me how much solar you think would be minimally appropriate for your use. And tell me, do you park camp or dry camp? And what part of the country are you from? Because that information would be so helpful for us to do a better job for you right now. So along the way, I've tried to show you a, a <laughs> derp. Okay, whatever, we're doing it live, I don't even care. Along the way, this dude's like, where's that derp sound coming from? Um, squirrel. Along the way, I showed you what I like, what I dislike. What do you think about this stuff? What do you think about my idea for changing the storage around the entertainment system? What would you do to make this floor plan better? And what would you say they absolutely need to keep? What is the number one thing they did fantastically well in this model? Let me know those things. Um, and I'll, again, I'll do my best to assist along the way. I'll of course leave you a link for pricing and availability in the video description. Um, Jayco hasn't had a chance to build a lot of these yet, so we may not be well stocked up on them. If you don't see one on our website, just call our team, we can get you some figures. Normally it would be all right out there and we don't do hidden dealer fees. We publish everything right up front. So when you're ready, we're ready. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.